All right, everyone, this is Josh Rubin from East West Healing. Today, I want to talk about three reasons why you might have SIBO. But if you would j j jump in, as always, please like this video. Please hit that subscription button, wherever it is, and notification button. Never know where they are. Because every single Wednesday, we release a video, and you will be notified first. Let's jump in. The first is chronic stress. This is a catalyst for the others. This is a catalyst for everything. Why? Of course, with chronic stress, right? All of our systems go into hyperdrive to meet our needs because our needs are not being met. All your lysis systems go up. Proteolysis, lipolysis, glycolysis, glycogenolysis. We get high blood sugar. We get high insulin. Sex hormone binding globulin. Sex hormone binding globulin. Blah, blah, blah. Sex hormone binding globulin goes down. We have more bioavailable estrogen, progesterone. Estrogen dominance. This is why a lot of women get PCOS, among other reasons, but. What happens is their cells get so overworked, they have to shut down because they can't keep up. Certain receptors get downregulated, right? So we're not producing energy anymore. This is chronic stress in the system. Now we're losing minerals at the same time. We lose, we lose copper, we lose magnesium, we lose potassium, etc. Cells hold on to sodium. We get calcification in the cell. It's just a vicious cycle of chronic stress in the system. So when we're living beyond our means, when the demands being placed in the organism, you exceed what the organism can handle, that's stress. It doesn't have to be like, I'm not stressed type of feeling. It's a physiological stress. So when those systems are up all the time, this is chronic stress. The problem is, your minerals are affected, how you produce energy is affected, how you produce antioxidants affected, your thyroid receptors are affected, everything is affected. The problem is when this happens, your body says, hey, I need to survive. I need to survive. I don't wanna procreate. I don't need to go to the bathroom. I just need to survive. So a lot of energy gets diverted from very important systems, one of them being the GI system. So in a simple sense, what happens is hydrochloric acid drops. Well, this is the gatekeeper to the small intestine, but also a huge piece to your immune system. So one thing it does is it controls what goes in to the small intestine, but what comes out, nothing should come out. The same time as thyroid's affected, you have gut motility and mobility issues because of this chronic stress. Well, it's been shown that most people have high levels of bad bacteria, we can call it bad bacteria in the small intestine, because of decreased mobility and motility in the small intestine. Why? Because of chronic stress and what it does to your minerals, your different endocrine systems, to your hydrochloric acid, and it slows down the system because eating isn't important. Because if you stop to eat, you'll become eaten. You're in survival mode. Right? So now you can't control your eating, but you can't control what kind of goes in, what's absorbed, what's not absorbed in the small intestine anymore, what kind of moves its way out, and you get a buildup of bad bacteria. This is the catalyst for SIBO. It's not a medical condition. It's not a medical condition that needs antibiotics or medications. It's an indirect result of something bigger. You chase SIBO, you're chasing your tail like a dog, and you're gonna get dizzy. Reason number two, it feeds off of number one, is iron. Pathogenic bacteria, fungus, um, and parasites feed on iron in the gut. How does this happen? Well, the iron fortification process, we're taking synthetic supplements, we're chronically stressed, we lose copper through metallothionine, we're taking hormones and medications that affect copper metabolism on, on top of this chronic stress. This is a problem because if you don't have copper, you can't recycle iron. And one of the places you recycle iron is the hepatocytes in, I'm sorry, the enterocytes in the gut. And the enzymes that regulate iron through those enterocytes are copper dependent, hephastin, ferro, um, ferroporin, ferrooxidase. If you don't have copper to unlock those doors, iron can't be recycled through the enterocytes into the blood, into the highway. So you show up with low iron, the simple explanation. The problem is you don't have enough copper to activate those enzymes because you're chronically stressed. You're taking supplements on top of that that just blow up copper metabolism. So you get iron buildup in that area because you're not recycling as well as in your tissues, well, pathogenic bacteria, fungus, and parasites feed on iron. Bacteria feed on iron. So because of the stress, right? I'll give you one example with stress, not only supplements and medications, but um, it causes you to chelate copper because you produce excess metallothionine. So you can't recycle iron through those uh, enterocytes. Well, now you can feed, right? You can feed this bacteria, which on top of stress is gonna lead to SIBO, right? The third is a retinol deficiency, which goes with number two, which is iron, because the only way you can load copper, right, 
to kind of produce bioavailable copper, which is called ceruloplasm, is with retinol. Retinol is the key that loads it into ATP 7A and B and the liver and the stomach, or I should say small intestine. So we can produce ceruloplasm, so we can activate energy, so we can, you know, um, produce antioxidants, so we can recycle iron, so we can activate DAO enzyme, the list goes on. And research has shown that when mice or rats, or in this like experiment you can see in the post, they were fed uh, retinol deficient diets, you saw certain bacteria in the gut go down and certain bacteria in the gut go up, right? The good went down, the, the bad went up, right? But then we're fed a diet that had retinol, the bacteria was completely eliminated and the, the bacteria is completely eliminated and the good bacteria is able to grow. Why? Because retinol allows us to not only produce a lot of gut bacteria, but allows us to, re, to pretty much, let's say, convert copper and recycle iron in the gut, right? You know, use, uh, it attaches to the TTR protein, so it plays a big role in thyroid health, which plays a big role in gut motility and mobility. So there's a lot of factors here, but it's stress, it's iron, and it's retinol deficiency that all play in one to another because stress affects iron, right? And retinol affects iron because of copper. So I know it's a big one, but the point of this is that SIBO is not a problem. It's a cause and effect issue. It's the effect of how we're living, or I should say how we're not living and how we're not eating and everything we're not doing to support our systems, to de-stress the system, to support them to do what they're designed to do, to support all the recycling systems, to support all the energy systems, so we can automatically balance the bacteria in our gut, right? As they say, if you give the body what it needs, nature will do the rest. Thanks for tuning in. I'm out.